welcome back to Liz Sews. So I'm going to start a little new series in what I'm calling project logs. So sort of going through my thinking on different projects and how I'm coming up with things, uh, not necessarily a sew along, but just more of a documentation of the life of how this project evolves. So the one that I wanted to start with this week is um, this really gorgeous mirror satin that I have in this jade colorway. And what I'm thinking I want to do with this is I want to recreate a bra that I saw on Beverly Johnson's blog. And I will post up a picture over here of the, the inspiration photo. So the bra that she made is using, I think she's using like a Kelly Green Duoplex. And I'm going to instead be using this mirror satin. So I am going to need to line it with sheer cup lining to make sure I have my stability in there. So when I was going to pick fabrics, this one I already had, but I went ahead and purchased some micro mesh, dotted micro mesh to go over it. And I picked this up from Bra Builders, but when I got it home, I'm thinking that this micro mesh might be just a little bit too opaque for what I'm thinking. So I wanted to have this satiny fabric in the bottom cup and then this micro mesh being an overlay so that the top of the cup is just micro mesh and then the bottom will have a combination of the two fabrics together but when i'm looking at this and sort of like against my skin i just feel like it's not exactly giving me the look that i wanted it really sort of obscures that satin too much uh, so i sit i'm setting this aside and i was i found some black bra tool in my stash, which I think will work a little bit better. So if I lay the bra tool over my satin, that's one layer, let's do two layers. Do two layers, I think that looks pretty good. I like how you can still see this sort of like shiny mirror quality of the satin, even through the bra tool. And then if we have the satin in the bottom of the cup, and then bra tool in the top of the cup. I think that gives a good, good contrast and it still looks like it's got something over my skin even though it's not much in terms of the bra tool. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna pivot slightly uh, away from the micro mesh and using the bra tool instead. So now I have to think about patterns and my first inclination is to go with the ruby bra pattern from Pinup Girls. Um, I've never made that particular pattern. And the fact is it's just coming in today. So I kind of want to get around and play with it. I have made the amethyst. And so I think those, those two bras are based off of the same block, I assume, because the cups and bands are interchangeable. So I'm hoping that I don't really need to do much to the ruby pattern because I've already fitted the amethyst. So I think what I'm gonna do is the ruby bra and that way the top of the cup, which is just bra tool, can be finished in fold over elastic. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so now that I have that all decided, I can go ahead and cut everything out. So taking a look at patterns, uh, I was fully expecting to have to do a tester version of this ruby bra just because it's not a pattern I've ever sewn before. Uh, but I started looking at it and what I noticed is that these three lower cut pieces were actually identical to the amethyst bra as well as sort of the frame of these two bras. Uh, the only difference being like the amethyst has a little bit more seam allowance or less seam allowance and uh, is cut with the seam going down the center front, whereas this one was cut on the fold, but like the frame shape that themselves and the size was all the same. So I decided to not worry about doing a tester bra of the Ruby just because I kind of already know my size in the amethyst and I think it fits fairly well. So that was a good thing because it, it made me cut down on some of my, my time for this bra. So I did get all of the pieces cut out uh, and it took forever just because there are a lot of them. So for the cut pieces here, there's 11, 11 pieces of fabric in each cut piece. And that's because for the bottom, I've done two layers of bra tool in opposing directions and then a layer of that green 
jade green stretch satin. So this is three pieces, another three pieces, another three pieces, and then it's two layers of bra tool for the upper cup. And those two layers are in opposing directions. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 pieces per cup, two cups, that's 22 pieces. Um, that's the back band stuff done here. And then I also got a little bit fancy with the frame as well. Uh, I think there's like seven pieces in this frame. So for the bra tool, I cut two layers of bra tool and opposing layers of stretch. And um, I cut these on the fold. So these are like one piece each. So there's to there and then for the the bottom layer I, I split the pattern piece so that it would there would be a seam running down the center front here um, and then I also took the pattern piece and I split it again right at that uh, notch mark I think this is the notch mark for F and so if we look at the pattern piece here uh, F is is where this upper cut piece interacts here. So the idea is that the upper cut piece here is gonna be sheer and then it's gonna come into a point and then come back up and be sheer over here. And I want it to look like this is all one continuous piece. So I cut this upper portion here out of uh, just like a nude, nude sheer cup lining. So it will still have st stability, but you just won't see it against my skin. So the idea is that I will sew these two pieces together and then I'll sew these two pieces together, like this, and then I'll sew those two units together down the center front, and hopefully what it'll end up looking like is you'll get that sort of like illusion of, of uh, the V here with that nude illusion up in the front. And then I also cut out another piece like this of just sheer cup lining, again, the nude, uh, and the reason that I've done this is because I want to make sure that on my, like if I had just left it like this and then done broad tool over the top of it, you would be able to see all of these seam allowances here, either in the very interior of the bra, or you'd see it through the bra tool. So, um, so what I'm going to do is this instead on the back innermost section of the bra against my skin. That way all of those seam allowances will be in uh, encased behind this. You'll still be able to see those seam allowances, but you won't be able to feel them. So I think that was a good solution. And all that is, is just that center portion of the frame um, that's cut on the fold and I just ended it prematurely. So ended it like right about here-ish. So there's a lot of like thinking that went on into how to develop this pattern piece and get it the way I wanted and for all those unique uh, unique little details like like this sort of pointed frame and, and the way I wanted the cups to look. But I'm really excited about it and ready to get sewing on it, just hoping that I can keep all of these pieces straight and separate and uh, get to going. So a lot of progress made since the last time that I talked to you guys. Uh, I must have some sort of like selective memory loss because I forget every time how much I absolutely hate working with bra tool and yet we keep choosing it to make bras. Um, so this was really, really finicky and uh, it's not perfect. I think it'll be okay. I don't think it'll show up very much once it's worn. I do like uh, on the stitch and flip seams here how I get four layers of bra tool and it, it really like accentuates that seam line of the cup. I think that's pretty cool and an ex unexpected sort of happy accident. Of course, now you can see a little bit better here what I'm going with with this neckline. So, of course, this will show my skin underneath it. And so I'm hoping that as it crosses over into the bridge, it has that continuous look of being just sort of like floating there. So I think that looks really nice. Um, I had to go really slowly just to make sure I was keeping all of these layers organized. And you can see here on the bottom of this band where, where the bra tool doesn't exactly line up uh, the way it should, but I think it should be okay just because I have a, a rather thick bottom band elastic, so you won't really see any of that. It's all gonna be covered up by the elastic anyway. Uh, I do like how the bra tool looks over top of the, the satin. Uh, I think it really gives a nice smoky look. So happy with how things are going, just a little frustrated because working with bra tool is so finicky and hard but now that I have everything sewn together it should just be really easy from here on out um, putting in the elastics on the band and the underarm and then just the straps and I can 
finish it up. Uh, from the inside, of course, I've done the stitch and flip method, so the, the cups are looking really nice. This is going to be covered up by the underwire channeling, so I won't see that at all. Oh, and here is my extra little piece in the bridge, so you can see how all of these these seam allowances are kind of big, and so I wanted just a, a little piece of fabric that can go over top of them. Uh, that way that you those seam allowances don't like bother you on the inside of the bra. And uh, I just leave it free floating in here because again, once that elastic gets in there and closed up and the channeling over top, you really can't see where this is going to end. Like this, this free edge will be completely enclosed and you won't see it. So I'm just gonna go over now and start putting elastics into the bra. And she is done. I'm really ecstatic how this bra has turned out. And I think this like, this sheer neckline just looks really, really cool, especially when it's on. So I have been wearing this bra for a few hours now. That's a good tip if you like to, are gonna photograph bras, is I always try to wear them for a few hours just before I photograph them, because I find that it like sort of shapes the cup uh, once it's been on my body for a little bit longer, it gives the cup a little nice smoother rounder of a shape and it looks a little bit better in photographs. But uh, really, really love this. Uh, and this neckline worked really well. I definitely want to try that again. Uh, fit wise, um, I actually think I need to go up another cup size. So this is a 3.75. So I might go up to a 4.0 the next time I make one of these patterns, just because I find they're a little bit minimizing on me like it looks like it fits really well there's not not like fabric or breast tissue that's like fluffing out anywhere I just like feel like it's kind of uncomfortable and I'm not getting as much of a bust line as I should have and then the other thing I think I want to do is maybe move the neckline edge here so move the strap attachment out a little bit further I have a little fluff right here and I think having this strap attachment in just like accentuates that fluff so I like to push it out maybe an inch three quarters of, three quarters of an inch but Definitely this bra is still wearable, even though there's things that I would change about it and do differently. I really love the seaming on the cup here. I think that turned out really well, and I think that's one of my, my favorite parts, and I didn't even realize that was going to happen when I was cutting everything out. And I think this neckline, again, that's another favorite part as well, because I think I, I definitely want to try that technique again, and maybe some of my other bras, maybe a Black Beauty, because I think it, it's a really cool look obviously because this is close to my skin tone and then my skin is behind this over here it just has that like illusion that there is nothing really there in the bridge even though it's super sturdy and there's like five layers of fabric there uh, from the inside of the bra it does look really nice and cleaned up uh, so stitch and flip all of the cups obviously so I have no exposed seam allowance here nothing here and you can see where that that mini bridge piece was in the center is completely covered up by the, the underwire channeling and the elastics on the bottom. So you don't see that at all. It just looks like one continuous piece, but it does give me that little extra stability right there in the center. So really happy with this bra and I hope you guys have enjoyed sort of a closer in-depth look on making it and my thought processes throughout. See you next time. Take care.